In this video, we're going to calculate the bending stress and radius of curvature on the beam cross section shown in the top left hand corner when a maximum bending moment of 2.2 kilonewtons is experienced. We have some data on the left hand side and at the top we have our beam bending equation. Now the first thing that we're going to calculate is the stress and we're going to calculate the stress from the bending moment experienced by the beam. Therefore, we're going to use the first two terms in our formula, sigma over y equals m over i. Now because we want to calculate the stress, we need to make sigma the subject. And the way that we do that is by multiplying each side of the equation by y. So sigma equals m y over i. Now we have our bending moment, so we need to determine y, the distance from the neutral axis, and to be more specific we want the maximum distance from the neutral axis because we want the maximum stress, and we also need to determine i. So i first of all, we said was bd cubed over 12 for a rectangular section, and we also said that it's important to make sure we get b and d the right way round. B is the width, 55 millimetres, and D is the depth, 75.5 millimetres. Now we're going to express each of those in metres, and the way that we convert millimetres to metres is by dividing by a thousand. So our formula becomes 55 divided by a thousand, 0.055, times the depth, 75.5 divided by a thousand is 0.0755. And that's cubed. And then we're going to divide all of that by 12, giving us a second moment of area equal to 1.9725 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the fourth. So we used B and D in meters, therefore, our answer is in meters to the fourth. OK, next we have our distance from the neutral axis, and if we refer to our diagram in the top left hand corner, we know that we have a neutral axis at the centre of the beam where no bending takes place. Therefore the maximum distance from the neutral axis, this distance here, is just going to be half of the depth. Well D is 75.5 millimetres, therefore Y is going to be the 75.5 expressed in metres, 0.0755 divided by 2, which gives us 0 0.03775 metres. So now we can input our numbers into our formula. We have sigma equals bending moment m 2.2 kilonewton metres. Well, 2.2 kilonewton metres is 2,200 newton meters. We need to multiply that by our value for y, 0 0.03775, and then divide that by our value for i, 1.9725 times 10 to the minus 6. Now when we run that through the calculator, we get a value of sigma equal to 42,103,000 929. We can finish by expressing the answer in megapascals, so that gives us a stress equal to 42.1 megapascals. We're going to do another example. This time we're going to use a beam with the same outside dimensions, except this time the beam that we're using is going to be hollow. OK, so pictured we have the new beam cross section and what you'll notice is that we have B and D as the outside dimensions and lowercase b and lowercase d as the inside dimensions. Those two rectangles there share the same neutral axis. So the first thing that we need to do is calculate the new value for our second moment of area. The cross sections changed, therefore the second moment of area has changed. And the way that we do that is by taking the outside dimensions, b, d, cubed over 12, so that gives us the second moment of area for the outside rectangle, 
And from that, we just subtract the second moment of area for the inside rectangle. We can do that because the two rectangles share the same neutral axis. So let's run some numbers on that. We have BD cubed over 12 for the outside. Recall that B is width and D is depth. So we have 0 0.055 times 0 0.0755 cubed over 12. And from that we're subtracting the second moment of area for our inside rectangle. B is 45 millimeters or 0.045 meters. And D is 62 millimeters or 0.062 meters cubed divided by 12. Okay, so take care when running this through the calculator that we get a value of I equal to 1.0788 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the fourth. Now, as you'll see, the value for our second moment of area has decreased, and the reason for that is because we have less material resisting the bending. Now, it's important to note that our value for y is going to be the same. So y is still d over 2, but more specifically, it's the outside depth over 2. The maximum stress is going to occur on the outside edge, not the inside edge of that hollow section. So we use the outside depth, 0 0.0755 over 2, giving us our 0 0.03775 meters that we had previously. Finally, let's calculate our stress. Stress equals my over i. M is still 2,200 newton meters. Y is still 0 0.0. 3775 and i is now 1.0788 times 10 to the minus 6, giving us a stress value equal to 76 million 983,686 pascals. Or converted to megapascals, that gives us 76.98 megapascals. So roughly twice the stress that was experienced by the solid beam. And we'd expect that there's less material, but that material is being placed under a greater stress. Okay, let's make a note of our stress value for this beam. And then we'll do a final calculation in order to determine the radius of curvature for this hollow beam. Okay, so referring back to our original three-part formula, we can see that we have a choice to make as to which two terms in the formula we should use. Now we're going to need to use E over R because we want to determine the radius of curvature. So we can either use sigma over Y or we can use M over I. Now I'm going to use sigma over Y. So our formula becomes sigma over y equals e over r. But the thing that we're trying to find r is on the bottom of the fraction. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the reciprocal of each side. And hopefully you recall when we reciprocate a fraction, the bottom becomes the top and the top becomes the bottom. So we need to do that for each side of our equation. So we'll end up with y over sigma equals r over e. Now in order to get r on its own, all we need to do is multiply each side of the equation by e. So what we get is r equals e y over sigma. Okay, so let's plug in some values. e is given in the question, it's 185 gigapascals. Recall that giga is 10 to the 9, so we'll have 185 times 10 to the 9, multiplied by y. Well, we already said that y was d over 2, and we calculated that previously as 0 
3775. And we need to divide all of that by the stress. The stress is 76.98 megapascals. Mega is 10 to the 6. And I'll put that in brackets just to denote that it's in standard form. Therefore, the radius of curvature of the beam equals 90.7 meters. And as we said before, if we were to take the curve of that beam and map it onto a circle, then that circle would have a radius of 90.7 meters. Okay, the final thing to mention is how we would determine the second moment of area for an eye section beam or a simplified eye section beam. And I'm going to mention this in principle rather than doing any calculations around this. So if we assume that this is a regular eye section beam, then we can see that it can be broken down into a number of rectangles. Now, if you were calculating the area of this shape, then you may choose to break this into one rectangle, two rectangles, three rectangles. However, when we calculate second moment of area, that wouldn't be applicable. And the reason being is those three shapes don't share the same neutral axis. So what we would need to do instead is divide this shape into an outer rectangle. And the outer rectangle we can see has a width here, which we can call B, and a depth here, which we can call D. But once we work out the second moment of area of that rectangle, we need to subtract two other rectangles. We need to subtract the second moment of area for this rectangle here. And we need to subtract the second moment of area for this rectangle here. The reason we can use this method to get the second moment of area of the regular eye section beam is because those three rectangles share the same neutral axis. So if we call this B, lowercase, and we call this D, lowercase, then the second moment of area of that shape is going to be BD cubed over 12 for the outside rectangle. And assuming our two smaller rectangles have the same dimensions, we would just need to subtract two lots of BD cubed over 12 for the two smaller rectangles. And that would give us the second moment of area of that shape because all three rectangles share the same neutral axis. So having been through this tutorial, you should now be able to calculate stress and radius of curvature for solid rectangular section beams, hollow rectangular section beams, and even regular eye section beams.